Good morning. I'm Dave Snyder, one of the worship leaders here at Living Hope. I'm recording this from my music room at home. This was formerly my daughter Jessica's bedroom. She got married in 2018, and I'm not sure if she was outside the city limits when I started moving my music equipment in. I see that face. Don't judge me. At least half of you have done it already, and the other half are starting to think, hmm. As with other artistic expressions, music conveys meaning in deeper ways than spoken word can. I think of songs like, If I Had a Million Dollars. They're not the funniest jokes you've ever heard, but when sung, I remember laughing out loud the first few times I heard, heard the song. Um, or I heard a comedian a little while ago talk about how songs these days just don't have the, the deep lyrics like the songs of his day like satisfaction. I can't get no. I can't get no. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. That's what I say. You get the point. Spoken, it's just not as strong. Or tearjerker songs, like Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. When sung, really powerful. But when spoken, the course of that song is just... Hallelujah. I'll never forget Katie Lang singing it at the Olympics. It was an amazing moment. I suggest that art is a powerful, God-given tool for us to use. I was asked to speak to you this morning about the musical portions of our worship service. Our corporate service time isn't, our corporate worship time isn't a performance for an audience. It's an expression of great worth, an expression of love between two hearts, yours and God's, through the inspiration and translation of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to break this down for you and apply it to the musical parts of our corporate worship. Music is a form of art that is a vehicle for poetry that provides a beautiful structure for someone's sentiments or theology. We hear these sentiments, and through, through singing along or just praying the words, um, we confirm that we agree with these thoughts, and we attach our sincerity in worship to God. North American culture counts on prepackaged and nicely wrapped sentiments. We feel that we're too busy or we're not skilled enough to create those ourselves. You see it all the time in greeting cards, in love song dedications, in memes, in gifts we give, or lots of other ready-made expressions of love. I don't want it to sound like I'm down on these because I married up and I would have never convinced her without some serious help. I hope if you'll forgive me if I use marriage as an analogy. I'll use several analogies today and I think they all fall apart at some point, but they give us a tangible example to draw inspiration from. It's not odd to buy a greeting card for your wife of 30 years. You can mean every word in it, but you lack the creativity, the attention span, the time, the graphic abilities, or in my case, sometimes the basic motor skills just to create the original yourself. Your sincerity is the key as exemplified through regular communication through your life together. Worship music can be beautiful, but I can't write music that well. I'm not a poet, I'm not a theologian. However, I can resonate with the artist and say sincerely to God, yeah, I mean this. He will accept my gift of worship based on our years of continual expressions of love. He knows the intent of my heart. His spirit within me bears witness to it as well. In fact, his spirit inspires me, compels me, and can even clarify my intentions as they go to God. The Holy Spirit plays a critical role in all aspects of our worship service, including our singing time. The Holy Spirit who is in, within each believer is like a conductor as we sing together. Let's look at an orchestral conductor as an example. A conductor selects the music and sometimes even composes the music for a particular purpose. 
A great conductor can be really exciting to watch and therefore inspires musicians. It can be infectious as they punctuate every accent in the music. A conductor offers rhythm to unify the players. I can just hear my mom saying, you're not doing that right. It's a particular motion. As they point out the details within the written music. And that's a critical point is that they, they say sometimes a swell here, or a quiet here, and then just the flutes or just the horns. The conductor may need to correct players, which can be really difficult for musicians, especially some musicians with big egos. But it can be good for the musician and it can be good for the, the greater orchestra as well. And they bring out the strong points in each player so that the collective produces a beautiful song. Although I'm using a musical analogy, I want to clarify that when we sing together on Sunday morning, the real music we're making is a spiritual song, not audible at all, as our hearts unify to minister to the heart of God. Let's review the role of the Holy Spirit. Similar to the conductor, the Holy Spirit points us to how awesome God is and interprets his greatness in a way that we can understand. This inspires us to cry out in true worship. We are unified in the rhythm he resonates in each of us, enabling us to respond as a collective to God. He works through the songwriters as they prayerfully compose God-honoring music. He also works through local worship leaders like us as we draw on his inspiration in the songs we select every week. He points us to the details in scripture or song or relationships so that through his counsel, we acknowledge the nuances that we would have otherwise missed. He convicts us of sin or areas where we're not pleasing God, bringing us into right relationship with God and with each other. He bears his fruit. I want to clarify, the fruit of the Spirit are actually the Spirit's fruit. He bears his fruit in us so that we're able to be patient with each other, encouraging, kind, and loving so that our corporate song ministers to God's heart. If these attributes of the Holy Spirit are unfamiliar to you, I suggest that you spend some time, either individually or with your hope group, looking at the various roles of the Holy Spirit. We worship in spirit and in truth. In John 4, 23 to 24, Jesus says, But a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such as these to worship him. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is referring to worship through the Holy Spirit with sincerity and in keeping with the truth as revealed in Scripture. We continually evaluate the songs that we do on Sunday morning to ensure that they're grounded in sound doctrine. We've discussed a new process where we would send the pastor a copy of lyrics uh, before he hears the song to do a doctrinal evaluation. We also delete songs from our lists as issues are revealed. One role you have as a congregation member is to engage with God in sincerity. You can engage in any way you choose. As there are many ways to express love in marriage, there are also many ways to express love in worship. Within the corporate singing time at church, you may choose to bow, to be silent, to sing, to raise your hands, or to dance. I think it would be really nice if Rocky and the elders did an interpretive dance for us when we come back together. In fact, I think Rocky and the Elders is a great name for a, a dance troupe. Regardless of your method, ensure that you sincerely offer expressions of great worth to God. Your approach is entirely between you and God, but it can also minister to and inspire those around you. Seeing and hearing others connect with God can stir up our spirit, or rather the spirit within us, as well. The same can apply to distracting others, but I don't see this at Living Hope and would like to see us free in worship and not constrained by what others think. I want to encourage you to give effort, 
in conveying love to God. And try new expressions that are outside your normal approach. I went to a conference a few years ago that taught us new ways to connect with God in prayer. They encourage us to use our imagination, and I found this really did offer a new way for me to connect with God. This time of isolation, away from others watching, can offer us anonymity, and therefore a good opportunity to sing out, to bow down, to lift hands, or otherwise express yourself in new ways. Take this time to practice. I grew up in a conservative setting where raising hands was discouraged and dancing was right out. I find that some environments help me to overcome these unhelpful paradigms so that I can explore worship in sincerity without feeling self-conscious. Worship in the spirit is a two-way function of blessing and being blessed. Efforts on our part through conceding to the Holy Spirit yield new blessings both to us and to God's heart. How awesome is it that we can actually bless God's heart? I want to speak briefly about lyrical styles in worship music. There are two main categories I'd like to highlight, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal lyrics are ones that may be about God or a theological principle, but directed at other participants. A good example uh, would be Amazing Grace, which is a testimony song, or A Mighty Fortress is Our God, that describes an attribute of God. So let's sing a verse of Amazing Grace and listen to how it's written about God, but not directly to him. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Chris Tomlin, a contemporary Christian artist, wrote the chorus to this otherwise verse-only song. Vertical worship speaks directly to God, like how great thou art, or O oh Lord, you're beautiful, and uh, lots of other modern worship songs. We can sing a little bit of O oh Lord, you're beautiful, and this comes from an era of choruses, but it actually has great verses, and it's just hard for the congregation to sing. Let's sing O oh Lord, you're beautiful. O oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek For when your eyes are on this child Your grace abounds to me I picked older examples to not imply a division between old and new. However, the majority of older music is horizontal and the majority of newer modern songwriters choose a vertical approach. We try to pick songs in our worship services that range in styles and themes so that hopefully there's something that you can easily apply and take into your week. As you listen to a song, think about what it's trying to convey. Allow the Holy Spirit to inspire you to offer what's on your heart back to God. Perhaps the song will stay with you, come into mind when you need it most. This is another function of our corporate worship. Through music, we can memorize scripture or lyrics for recall when we need them. I'd like to also draw your attention to some of the pitfalls 
in our corporate musical worship. By the way, corporate singing has likely divided more churches over the years than anything else. This is pitfall number one. Don't let a seed of division grow, especially in the area of worship. The irony is quite striking. Being unified in one spirit to offer worth to an awesome God, but fighting about the tune. Living Hope is non-judgmental about music. I really appreciate that, uh, that the heart of this congregation is unified. Pitfall number two, don't get hung up on the music. Music is a vehicle that we use to deliver concepts. Using a greeting card analogy, you are the giver. The music is the cardstock. Poetry is the graphics. The theology is the sentiment. And the sincerity is all up to you. Some people hate music and some people love it too much. Music is the medium that's used. Don't get hung up on the medium. I find that some of my most effective worship times happen away from music because I analyze it too much. I often have trouble seeing past it. Don't expect me to make something happen for you. This is pitfall number three. The worship leader is just a facilitator. We point you to a message through song, praying that the Holy Spirit will work in you to inspire your worship to God. Success for a worship leader is not applause. It's not raised hands. It's not even loud singing. It's that people connect directly with God, heart to heart. Look past the performer on the stage, kind of odd in our church, and recognize that the message is being handed over to you to deliver. We are not performing for you, and you are not an audience. You are there to offer worth directly to God, your audience of one. I want to leave you with one last story. I've had asthma all my life, and so when COVID-19 came along, I started working from home immediately. I've now been spending a lot of time at home in our house and our yard and really enjoying it. I've completed some renovations that I wanted to do and planted a vegetable garden. I've always loved our house, but over the last couple months, in my case, affections are developed through time spent. I think the same is true with our worship time. Spend time with God throughout your day, and I bet you'll find that corporate worship is stronger and deeper for you. So please take this time of isolation to spend time with God, exploring ways to connect with him heart to heart through his spirit. Let's pray. God, you are good all the time. Let's not forget that. Thanks, Lord, for the many blessings and gifts that you give us. And Lord, thanks in particular for your Holy Spirit and how he builds us up, how he corrects us, how he counsels us and feeds us and all the ways that he equips us through his gifts. And Lord, thanks also for our, our connection to each other and to you through the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that we would each get closer to you during this time. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening.